gastric folds belong to antrum corsa in figure 01. Note the bulbous content of gas mixed with the fluids. A harmless Turish lymph node after a Swiss guest physician, no pathology in figure 02a. Big lymphoma in figure 02b in the course of Buch's disease. Mildly hypoperfused FL in the liver in figure 03. Cytology revealed a widespread CCC. Note the fine needle tip in figure 04 of interventional US in a malignancy. In figure 05 there was acute painful cholecystitis with US guided palpation. In the course of an IPMN a colletos fistula had to be observed in case 06. A sarcoma in figure 07 is seen in a young man. These colletoho stones in figure 08 were demonstrated in ERC only. An abdominal abscess due to laparoscopy was the source in video 09. Harboring this worm in figure 10 in the DHC did not cause any symptoms at all. In the second case, in 11, however, it was mildly symptomatic. An incidental finding in case 12, it was fully reversible in this alcohol addict. In this case, however, in figure 13, an HCC was responsible of these constant changes. Tumor thrombosis again in 14A due to CCC. Already CF shows tumor vessels, in this case 14, so bubbles, nice but completely superfluous. A gallstone ears of the small intestine was responsible for these findings in videos 15 and 45 A to D as well. Only a sufficiently long-lasting and powerful contrast eye injection during ERC could confirm ultrasound diagnosis of a stone in 16A and 16B, respectively. A pancreatic carcinoma had been operated in 17. Note little difference in echogenicity of obstructing FL for collision. Further therapeutic option in this old patient in 18 was simply palliative stenting. X-ray in ESC gives in this figure 19 less information as compared to clinical ultrasound. After biliodigestive anastomosis for some years ago, the stone in figure 20 was successfully treated by ESWL. Regarded as a cyst only in CD scanning of this single patient in 21A to C, this case turned out to be caused by a congenital malformation in the sense of a colodocosele with intrahepatic changes as well, figure 21B to C. Further examinations have been done unneededly. This clear case in figure 22 demonstrates once more features in biliary obstruction. An enormous dilatation of extrahepatic bile duct is shown. Please note the intercrossing right branch of the hepatic artery. These three different cases 
in figures 24 A to C are all stones related. They are without a cities in figure 24 A and with a cities in 24 B to C. Additional to arises in portal hypertension in 24 B. This aneurysm in figure 25 was observed before bubbles were available at all. In another case, in figure 26, CF was helpful in diagnosing also after coiling. This enormous stone load in figure 27 was due to a post-operative stricture. Due to an indifferent attitude, a T-tube had been in figure 28 in C2 for more than one year. Note please in figure 29 course and tip of the percutaneous drainage, hydrops and sludge. This old lady had been operated years ago with the phrenic exeresis because of TBC. Subsequent situs changes are caused by the left phrenic paresis. Pictures give you an idea of quality available in the 70s. Stone sludge masses and pericolid cystic fluid collections and palpation pains in 31 prove acute inflammation. A so-called forgotten stone in cholecystectomy was smashed by ESWL in figures 32. In case 33, ESWL post-operatively was chosen as well as non-operative measure. These huge stone masses in 34A were also subjected successfully to ESWLC 34B and after performing endoscopy in vain. ESWL as well was performed in this case in 35 with a good fragmentation result. Please note the hepatic infiltration in figure 36 in the bladder in Fudiblia part. Or is it an HCC invading the gallbladder in figure 37? Pain-free icterus in case 38 caused by a malignant structure, whereas the stone is asymptomatic. This foreign body in figure 39 was, after cholecystectomy, extracted endoscopically. Aside drainage in 40T, there is seen a dilated pancreatic duct ahead of vena porte, both in 40B and 40D. The tumor is nicely displayed in 40B as well, and is sequela, double duct stenosis in ERC2. Yet a third case is in movie 40D. This series show a Bouvray concretion sonographically undrained in picture 40A and with the range in B after trying endoscopic extraction 41C in vain and after ESWL fragmentation figures 41D and E respectively is in figure 41E one the bulbous which is second fragment filled. The arrow is pointing at the pylorus. CF nicely and easily displays in figure 42 the good function of the stent. Again, CF demonstrates its high efficacy in looking at the tip's function 
in figure 43b. In A, there is no CFE yet. The highly impedant borderline in 44a between liver and gargius ameliorates depiction of a nodular liver surface, which is well seen in laparoscopy as well in 44b. A clip after laparoscopic cholecystectomy and a migrating bullet from World War II are displayed in figures 45 and B in clinical US. They were misinterpreted as stones. Sludge and stones filled a gallbladder without major shadowing is seen in figure 46. Asymptomatic 2 were these two different cases in figures 48a and b, despite their seemingly alarming morphology. Inverse perfusion, like in 49, is a sincere sign of liver cirrhosis. In 50 A and B, a typical complication of thermoablation in a CCC is seen needle tract implantation. It is here in a slim lady with a focal lesion near to the surface of the liver and without any protective fatty layer. These features are typical for a stone perforation and following gallstone use. Coincidence of erbilia, figure 50a, colicky pains of the day before and a period of falls peace, no complaints at all, followed by echoscopic features of a small intestine ileus like in case 40b and earlier in 15, with very old age and direct proof of intestinal dislocated stone as in 50 CC. They then led in earlier times to operation. Nowadays, ESWL is well feasible. 